Now, let's dimension the curved wall's radius. Activate the Radial Dimension tool in the toolbox and enter the settings as follows. Dimension Type Without Center Point Marker Size 1.0 mm Font Size 2.0 mm Layer Dimensioning Structure Click OK Click the internal perimeter line of the curved stone wall with the thick Mercedes cursor to set the place of the arrowhead. Click inside the entrance area to place the dimension line. Now, we'll add some level dimensions to the floor plan. Level dimensions can associatively link to a position of an element or be independent. To place some associative level dimensions, Activate the Level Dimension tool. Open the Level Dimension Settings dialog to see the available dimension parameters grouped on tab pages. These settings define the behavior and appearance of the placed dimensions. Set the parameters as follows. Marker Size 2.0 mm Font Size 2.0 mm Layer Dimensioning Structure Click OK. To make a level dimension associative, you have to specify the element you want to anchor the dimension to. This is necessary because several overlapping elements may appear on the floor plan at the point you want to place the dimension. Select the Gravity tool on the standard toolbar and set Gravitate to Slab. Click on the exterior pavement slab and the interior floor slab to place level dimensions. These dimensions are associative to the element, so their value will be updated if the parent element changes. Change gravity to mesh, and place some level dimensions on the site mesh, typically around the building and on the level lines. Repeat the steps above to place level dimensions on the gallery level. If the roof is visible, you can also set gravity to roof so you can place level dimensions on the roof eaves as well. To change the marker type, open the level dimension default settings and use the select marker type icon in the type and font panel. For the markers at the bottom eave, set the marker rotation angle to 180 degrees in the Type and Font panel. Turn off gravity when you're done placing the level dimensions. Activate the S1 Building Section view. Activate the Dimension tool in the toolbox and select the Elevation Construction method and the Upper Direction chain on the info box. Open the Dimension Default Settings dialog and set Marker Type Solid Marker Text Size 2.0 mm Marker size 1.0 mm. Click OK. Let's dimension the right side of the building by clicking on points of the roof, slanted wall, slab, ground slab. Only click on points that will be highlighted with the circular marks and foundation. Double-click to finish point selection and place dimension. Now let's see how the dimension is updated if the parent element changes. Select the slanted wall. Click on its upper node to display the pet palette 
and select the Stretch Height command. Move the cursor upwards and type 4. The level dimension will automatically jump to the right position. Later on, you may need to add points to an existing dimension chain. Having the dimension tool selected in the toolbox, move the cursor over the dimension chain until it turns to a Mercedes cursor. Shift click to select the chain and try to drag it to display the pet palette, and select the Insert Merge Dimension Point command. Click the points you want to add one by one. Depending on the dimensioned point, you may want to indicate whether the point is measured from top or bottom. In our dimension, all markers show top dimensions. Now, we'll change some of the markers to a bottom position. Having the dimension tool selected in the toolbox, hold down the shift button and select the dimension markers you want to change. Select the bottom dimension direction on the info box. The selected dimensions change like this. If you zoom closer to the dimension chain, you will see that some text and markers overlap, or they are too crowded to read easily. To solve this problem, you can drag the text to a more convenient position. With the dimension tool active, Select the dimension text you wish to adjust by hovering the cursor around the text and shift-clicking when they are highlighted. Click on the black snap point. Simply drag it to a new position. In some cases, you may put a prefix or suffix to the dimension text, or simply override it. The reason for this may be that you want to add additional information to the automatically calculated value using custom or automatic text. You want to completely replace the automatic value with different information. Open the zero ground floor plan from the navigator. Select the text of the topmost dimension at 10.5 meters by shift clicking on it. Open its settings dialog by clicking on the Settings dialog icon in the info box. On the Content panel of the Settings dialog, you can see the measured value, which is the default. Now click the Custom Text radio button. An automatic text instantly appears in the line, showing measured value. If you keep this text, the value will follow the model changes. You can also delete the value and replace it with something else. First, let's add a note to the dimension. Type Overall Dimension before the automatic value. The displayed value area shows the result which will appear on the screen. Please note, if you completely override the automatic dimension value, it's recommended to change its text pen color so later on you can easily check the manual values. If you want to restore the original measured value, simply select the Measured Value radio button in the Text Settings dialog. You can open all floor plans, elevations, and or create new sections and place the necessary dimensions. Dimensions are fully associative, however, we recommend placing them before you put the documentation together. This way you can avoid losing dimension points because of deleted and remodeled elements, or undimensioned structures. In this chapter, you added automatic and manual dimensions to the project using ARCHICAD's dimension tools. This way, floor plans, sections, and elevations are almost ready to be published.